I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We're still up in Boise and meeting the most wonderful people. I hope you've enjoyed this, the shows that we've aired already and posted and uh, just wonderful people up here in this beautiful country up here and yeah so i'm i'm happy to introduce to you debbie phillips i appreciate you coming and sharing your story i'm glad to be here yeah where were you born are you are you a original idahoan actually i was born in maysville arkansas in arkansas okay yes and, and my family just moved and moved and moved and we wound up in idaho and then i wound up in or we wound up in Utah, oh, then yeah. I wound up in Idaho. Oh, and you've been in Boise for a long time, or Meridian, or wherever you... About 12 years. Oh, have you? Okay. You enjoy it up here? I love it. Do you? I love Idaho. Yeah. Well, I've sure found it beautiful. I've been through here a few times, and of course spent more time on the west, uh, on the east side of the state, but a uh, beautiful country. So were you born into the church then? Actually, I was a convert. Uh, my... Uh, both parents were divorced when I was six, and three years later my father married a Mormon, and she brought us f to Utah, and um, we became Mormons at that time. Ah, you were very young when you got baptized, but you were a convert, right? I mean, you were yes. like 10 or 11 or something? or um, I think that we were about, I was about nine when we, when we came yeah. into the church. Uh, uh, and I was probably about 10 or 11 when I was yeah. baptized. But they consider that a convert baptism. And yes. I guess between eight and nine, you're okay. But after nine, you're a convert or something, I yeah. think is the way they count that. So were you active then? Did you go to primary and? Yes, and I did. Young women and all that? Yes, I, I, uh, I attended uh, church every Sunday, um, Tuesdays. Uh, I was in primary. Um, as I grew older, I was in um, uh, Mutual, sure. and uh, I taught uh, Sunday school classes. And Did you? Yes. At, at what age were you? Was this when you were older? Yes. Okay. I was, I was probably about 15, 16, I'm thinking. I'm not really sure. When the they called frame. you to be a Sunday school teacher? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to cover that in a bit, I think. Okay. <laughs> little story, but now did you, uh, uh, so did you take seminary? and? I did. Yeah. It's right across the street from school, oh, so we convenient. just had to go across the street. Yeah. What did you think of Jesus, I guess, maybe is a good question for you uh, at this point in your life, did you? Well, my, my, when my parents divorced, we went to live with my Assembly of God grandmother, oh. and she was a true Christian. And she taught me about the Bible. We, we, it, my cousin, my aunt and I learned to read um, C, C. Jane Run, Run or yeah. C. Spot Run, whatever. Right. And then we had to read something from the Bible. So you kind of got a, a really good education as far as how to read. And um, the stories that she told us, um, and we would have bedtime stories from the Bible, wow. uh, were 
wonderful. Uh, I developed a love for the Bible long before. Now, was this before? This was after you were baptized. No, this so was before. This was before I was okay. baptized. Okay. Okay. I was about six, I think, at this time. Six. So through you started getting an appreciation eight. for the Bible and the uh -huh. stories. Yes, and I learned who Jesus was, and I fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with even at this God. young age. Oh yes. Oh, so yes. what did it mean to you then? And make, of course, you were very young, but to be baptized into His true church. What did that? Was this an important thing for you to realize that you'd come to the true church of Christ? I never as understood they call quite. It. I never understood quite, quite what that meant, the true church. Yeah. Um, and I didn't understand why I had to be baptized into a church when, in my mind, a baptism should be a baptism into Jesus. You know, yeah. that, that, that he was, he is the most important um, thing in our lives. And the fact that, that I was being baptized into a church kind of left me. You really felt that? I, I, yeah, I felt that because I'm it just, just didn't so feel right. I'm just so impressed with you young people when you were doing <laughs> that, to, to have that insight. I think young people have more insight as far as they look at it more, it's easier for us to see. Or as a I'm, child, yeah, I'm going yeah. through my second childhood now, so <laughs> it's a lot easier for us to see uh, the the things that are. Kind I, of we clear don't away the stuff yes. and just look at yes. what's happening here. And, yeah, yeah, well, fascinating. So during your growing up in the seminary and all that, did any other questions come up that you, or, or did you? Did you sense that the church was teaching Jesus? And I did not. I did not sense you Jesus. You noticed in a that. difference between what your grandmother had been teaching and exactly. the church teaching. Yeah, and I could never understand how um, Joseph said that he went into a, a garden and and um, into the grove. Yeah, yeah into yeah. the grove, and and that God, who is spirit, and Jesus had come to him. And That's what the Bible says, huh? That he's a spirit. Yeah, 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 the Bible does teach that. But he, he said that they had told him not to join any other churches because they were all an abomination to right. him. All corrupt. And, all corrupt. Yeah. But see, at the same time, I'm reading church scripture. And in the church history, I think, it, it, Joseph Smith's history, yeah. I think it was, he was saying that after this happened, he was talking to a Methodist minister, I believe it right. was, mm -hmm. and the Methodist minister uh, just kind of made fun of him. In my mind, with the respect that I have for God <laughs> and the love that I have for he and, and Jesus. I, I just think that if God had told me, don't join another church, I would have said, okay, if I can't join that church, I'd better not be trying to get doctrine yeah. from these people. And I would have stayed away from them. So that he was still going back to them never made sense to me. Yeah, and he actually tried joining in 1826, as I understand it. Yes. He tried to join the Methodist Church, and they wouldn't accept him because of his gold digging or pre treasure seeking kind of uh, <laughs> That was background. another thing I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> that was, well, anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Another silly thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how much we learn when we really are willing to look, isn't it? Yes, yeah. and I think that that's the big thing is, is that you have to have an open mind and um, realize that we were talking about a man here. He's not the creator. He is a creation. And that the creator is greater than the creation. And everything that I heard about Joseph Smith through his own lips, yeah. him saying that he was um, greater than any man who had ever lived, including Jesus Christ, had done a greater work, yeah. because he had done greater works, That's and in the he had been of the church, isn't it? yes, yeah. and that he'd been able to hold his church together longer than Christ was. <laughs> that his 
I, I, yeah. Anyway, and I just, that to me was a blaspheme. I know, because he was doing something that even Jesus couldn't do, and that, that is blasphemous, isn't it? So you are teaching Sunday school at some point, and you start teaching about Cain and Abel. Tell us that story yeah. again. Um, I, in the Bible, it says that, that God placed a mark on Cain to protect him. In, in the story that I was told to give to the children, they were, I was to tell them that the, that the children of Cain had dark skin. Yeah. And knowing and that was the curse that was here. yeah, and so it was a curse, and I'm and I'm thinking that's not biblical. That doesn't that doesn't ring true. That that can't be true. So, so I told the children. I said I read it from the Bible to them, and I said, do you understand here where it says that the mark wasn't to punish Cain; it was to protect him. Yeah, keep him it from was being protection. Killed, yeah. 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 Uh, and I said, for all we know, the mark of Cain is blue eyes. <laughs> and luckily for me, the bishop's daughter was in my class. Lucky. And she had, Did you say lucky for you? I said unlucky for me. Oh, unlucky, okay. Because she had blue eyes. And she got up and went to her father. And he was very upset. Did he call and you? And he in? called me into his wow. office. And he told me that he... Um, had, we'd had several skirmishes, and so he wanted to tell me that he felt that my, uh, that I did not see the LDS church as the, the true church, so therefore it might be a good idea if I went out into the world and tried to find another church that would be as good as the LDS church, and that he knew that I would be back in three years to apologize for, for my attitude. And I never saw the man again. Oh, no, you didn't. So, um, but I, I thank him every day of my life. For challenging For you challenging me to get out of there and go and find the, the Christian church I found. And I was truly blessed. Wow. Did he, you say you had had other discussions with him before about things? Mm -hmm. Just questions that you had had? Well, I gave a two and a half minute talk once before, and and what was it on racism in the church? Oh dear! And um, I didn't even get the first sentence out before he had me sit down. So really, he actually pulled you off. The, yeah, the two yeah. and a half minute talk. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes, and a friend of mine, luckily, was the next speaker, and he took up the time <laughs> for the church. But see, did I had, he, what did he say to you after that? Oh. Just that you you should be he, talking about. Yeah, something. he said he he just told me that uh, I was not to be um, thinking on my own like that. That I was to listen to my leaders and not question, um, just to do what I was being told to do. And um, so when he gave you this counsel to go search elsewhere and see if you can't find uh, or expect to find something better or something and. So did you go out and visit a church then? I went out what and visited several churches. Yeah, Christian churches. Christian churches. Um, now, had you been to church with your uh, Assembly of God grandmother? Oh, yes. Or yeah, well, for the three years church? that we had. Yeah, we, we, we went to church several times. Yeah. And did you sense uh, Jesus was different there than he was in Mormonism? You know, Jesus was in my grandmother as well as in the church. I never had to doubt. What a doubt. wonderful way to say that. I never had to doubt because my grandmother showed me through what, her what a relationship love was, huh? and through her the way she treated others who Jesus was. And my father was the same way. I, I never doubted Jesus because I had such great examples to draw from. Oh my goodness. So you knew that they knew who Jesus was. Yes. And we just, we, the Mormons just don't really catch that in, in their Mormonism, do they? they? Jesus is just our older brother. He's uh, kind of came along first. 
what did you think of him? What did you hear about him in Mormonism or think about him? Oh, the worst thing. Or what thing. they thought. I never could believe that Jesus was the brother of Satan. Um, I, I really didn't, like I say, there wasn't that much said about Jesus. It was Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, Parley C. Pratt, Parley P. Parley Pratt, P. Pratt, yeah. P. Pratt. And, 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 um, and home teaching and tithing and yeah. temple attendance and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, it's just amazing the difference. Did you understand grace at all? Um, I once had a bishop tell me that we didn't do grace. Oh, we didn't? Uh, Mormons so, don't do yeah. grace? <laughs> yeah. They really don't. I mean, someone else was saying it. the grace in, in the LDS where Jesus is, is just a matter of giving us resurrection, that we, we are saved means that we've been resurrected for free, that we don't have to pay for a resurrection. But then to get to the celestial kingdom and to do more, that's what we have to do. So they don't understand grace, do they? Mm -mm. Yeah. And I think that the, the, the fact that they feel they must do works is, is another, when they say, after all you can do, and then Jesus, yeah. that to me is another blaspheme. It is. I mean, how can you, how can you put <laughs> working at the, um, what do they call that thing? The warehouse where you do food, or oh, at the DI or the yeah, the, yeah, the just the yeah, desert industry, yeah. desert industry, yeah. or one of those. Yeah. How does that compare with Jesus's suffering <laughs> on the cross for all of us? Yeah, and and to have all of our sins yeah. placed on Him, that to me was such a blaspheme. And I don't do my works because God gave us all works to do. But I don't do my works because I have to for my salvation. Or to get points. <laughs> or to get points or anything. Uh, because I don't think I'm ever going to have points. But the thing that I do have is the knowledge that my Savior went on the cross and died for my sins. That means that when he said, it is finished, my sins were paid for. All of them. Paid in full. Paid in full. Mm -hmm. And I needn't worry about that as much as if I had to work for them. Yeah. Now the works I do are done with joy. They're done with gratitude that I can do anything to please Him. Because that's, that's my joy in life is all I live for is to do His will. Yeah. And that's such a different concept instead of trying to earn our way that we know Jesus is His righteousness and what He's done for us. Mm -hmm. Cross means a little bit different. I notice you've got a beautiful cross there. I wear this because it gives me, whenever I'm thinking, do I really need <laughs> to go by that? And I'm thinking, <laughs> no. Because God keeps me on the straight and narrow. Yeah. This cross, I like this one because it has a sun around, which oh. Jesus, God is, is like the light. When the we light. get to heaven, it, it, will be lit, the world. Yeah. it will be lit by the Lord. The cross is a sign of all my sins. Yeah. And the fact that there is no cross there means that one day I get to live with the Savior yeah. who died on that cross for my life. For Don't me. you love that scripture that says preaching of the cross to them that are perishing is foolishness or something like that? And yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've, I've appreciated the cross so much more. I never did as, a, as LDS. In fact, it was kind of reprehensible, I guess is the best word. Well, it, it was. was. Yeah, you just didn't, uh, didn't have any regard for it at all. And, but Jesus it was all about the garden, that. the garden of Gethsemane <laughs> instead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he so suffered you, in the garden. Now you, born again moment, did you have such a thing? Did you have a conviction at some point that? You know, I, between my grandmother and I, and I, I truly do think that in the back of my mind, it seems to me like my grandmother and I talked about Jesus and that she and I prayed together. And I think I was saved when I was six. But then when I met my husband and we were married and we wanted to be Christians together, 
we decided to go and talk to someone about how, how we do that. Mm -hmm. And they led us in the salvation uh, the prayer. prayer. And when we came out of there, we sat like a half an hour in the car and just looked out the window. And then <laughs> kind my of speechless. Husband, yeah, yeah. And then my husband said, what just happened? And I said, I think we got saved. <laughs> and we drove home and my little husband went into the guest room and he was in there for three days and three nights. He wouldn't eat. I had to force him to take something to drink. I could hear him in there crying and praying. Oh. And I kept saying, is there something, what's going on? What can I do to help you? And he said, just, just let me, just work, let me alone for a while. I'm working this out with God. And I said, okay. And when he came out of there, um, my husband was 36 when we got married and I was 27. He'd never been married, I'd never been married. Oh. He'd been a man the whole time <laughs> and he wasn't a Christian. And so he wanted, it, being saved brought all of his sins into his mind and he felt that so deeply in his soul and he wanted to, to free himself of that and he prayed and prayed and prayed. When he came out, he hadn't been asleep at all. And, I, oh and he's telling me how he, what he was doing in there. And he says, I need to, I need to unburden to you about my, my life. And I said, honey, <laughs> your life before me may have been filled with sin, yeah. but it's not important to me. Your life and mine began when we came together. And this is How wonderful. This is this is our life. From here on out, yeah. we will live for the Lord and not and and try not to sin. And he said, "You sure you can live with that?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm positive." And he, I said, "Because I I really love you. I do. I love you dearly. God gave you to me. You're my gift, you know." And he said, "Okay." And then he fell asleep in my lap. Oh. And I sat there on the couch for 12 hours. Well, he slept. Well, he slept. Oh, you're such a dear. <laughs> but I thought that that was such... I. But isn't it interesting that God loved him, even in his sins, and now loves him, continues to love him as a, as a saved person? Yes. He was a very dear man. Uh, and it's been two years, you said? Yes, he passed. went to be with the Lord two years ago. Yeah. And now I keep you... imagining him trying to teach the disciples how to fish with lures, because <laughs> he loved to fish. He was a, and he made his own lures, I'll bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he made his own flies. Now did you, yeah, flies. <laughs> did you um, share this with family, and how did they take? Uh, My family and I have been, have been estranged. Uh, for the most part. My mother was very devastated. My father was never really a good Mormon either. <laughs> but um, they were married in the temple. Yeah. But he could never learn the shunning thing with me and neither could my brothers. Oh, good um, for them. They, they all still accepted me as me. They loved you. They loved yeah. me. It is hard though for family, isn't yeah. it, to and accept it, that? And it was hard on them because there was that constant tension. Yeah. Um, Did you ever sense that you now know, I mean, part of what we, I think about Mormons is that they really don't know their history and their doctrine very well. They kind of sure. know what you were saying about your Sunday school lesson is that you're te you taught what the church wants you to teach. Don't think outside that. Mm -hmm. Do you find that pretty, I mean, that's probably part of the big problem, isn't it? It if is. If they knew it more. It really is. Yeah. If they knew more and were doing any studying or thinking that they'd start seeing some of these little things because they eventually just domino down where mm -hmm. you, you see more than so many problems with the, the doctrine and certainly the history, mm -hmm. the polygamy and that kind of stuff that, that we didn't know before as, as good Latter-day Saints. And, yeah, because yeah. I, I really have found with talking to, to uh, my Mormon friends that they really don't understand their history at all. No. They just are going with what they're being told. Yeah, they don't understand grace and who Jesus is. You had an interesting little phrase when you mentioned that you went to a Christian church the first time after you'd, I guess, been out uh, 
searching or whatever, you, you said something felt like you were coming home. Yes, the yeah. first time I went into a, a Bible church, um, I walked in and it just felt like home. I mean, I listened to the pastor. The pastor was amazing. Yeah. And um, talking, the, talking about Jesus. Yeah, the, and stuff he and just he had such a wonderful uh, ability to, to tell you from the Bible. Yeah. Um, just just made you fall in love more with the Bible. And I just told my husband when we when we were walking out there, I said, "This is home." And he said, "Yeah." He is. felt that too. Mm -hmm. And the music is is uh, and the words, you know, to, to praising Jesus and God and. Yeah, I'm old, so sometimes some of the worship music is a little. Yeah, I, yeah, I but, know. What but you I, mean. but the old hymns, <laughs> I love, and and I do love some of the worship songs as well. And isn't it interesting? Uh, you feel a freedom to be able to go to different churches and to look yes. and, and to to see what does fit for you, because there are places that use hymnals and more quiet, reverent kind of music, and then others where the the band gets you going and the drummers uh, drumming and the <laughs> guitars guitaring and you know it uh, but that's fun and and I love having the words up that you can see and you're praising Jesus mm -hmm. which and people are there because they want to be there mm -hmm. isn't that wonderful it is yeah. and and I I have to say that I don't go for the music or for anything other than um, just for my time to be with the Lord yeah. and be with brothers and sisters in Christ and um, well, well, Debbie, our time's almost okay. gone. Anything you want to say to your family or friends or if there's to the one, LDS out there? Yeah, I have I have a lot of LDS friends, yeah. and um, I hope they watch this. I hope they do too. Yeah. And I just want you guys to know that um, I love you. And if if there's one thing that I I want, it's it's that I see you in heaven. I would love to have you be there. Um, and I promise you, I'm not telling you a lie when I tell you that if you will just pray and ask God, He will tell you. And he won't send you that warm feeling, <laughs> but He will tell you in time, if you pray and pray, that the Bible is the true Word of God. And it's trustworthy and yes. reliable. Why would He lie to us? And He's brought, He said, My heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. So we Same have his word, we have the gospel, what Paul preached, and the, the warnings Paul gives about preaching a false gospel. And, well, Debbie, thank you so much. You're such a sweetheart, and good luck to you in the rest of your life. And thanks for joining us. See you next time.